What's up guys? Joel with Motors of Mischief. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today, this is a review. We're doing a review on e-fuel. And like the title says, the reason why we're doing the review is because Donut Media and um, Engineering Explained have both done videos on e-fuel and we think they missed a few things. So we think they, we think Donut didn't get it far enough and we think that Engineering Explained missed something. So we wanted to go over those things and give you our take on e-fuel and what we think is going on with it. Okay, first thing, want to say that we are big fans of Donut Media. We subscribe to their channel. We're big fans of Engineering Explained. We subscribe to Jason's channel. Seem like great guys. We'd love to get to know them someday. First thing I'd like to do is talk a little bit about e-fuel so you know what we are talking about. First thing to get out of the way, e-fuel is not biofuel. They are two completely different things. E-fuel is synthetic fuel. Okay, to start with, traditional gasoline, we drill down in to uh, get uh, oil. It's made up of old dinosaurs. We pull that out, we process it, we burn it, mix it with O2, it creates CO2 which gets released into the atmosphere. E-fuel is a carbon neutral fuel and the reason why is because the CO2 is taken out of the atmosphere, burned in the combustion process, and then the CO2 is released back into the atmosphere. So currently what we've got is all of this on traditional gasoline is contained in the Earth's surface. When we bring it out and we burn it, that's what puts it up into the atmosphere. That's what gets the carbon into the atmosphere, which causes the problems. So let's go ahead and talk about exactly how e-fuel is made. So uh, e-fuel is created, like I said, with uh, CO2 that comes out of the air. It takes water, energy, and CO2 from the air, and that's you combine all that and make e-fuel. Uh, the process is a little bit more complicated. So basically what you do is you start with water. That gives you hydrogen and oxygen, H and O2. Then you take CO2 out of the air, like we were talking about from right here, and you combine that CO2 with the hydrogen that you got from right here. CO2 plus hydrogen equals synthetic methanol. The formula for synthetic methanol is C10H20O. All right. Once you've got the synthetic methanol, you can refine that down into e-fuel. So you take two of those synthetic methanols, the C10H20O, and you combine them together and you get dimethyl ether. Dimethyl ether is C2H6O, and you've also got some leftover H2O, which is water. Okay, so this process takes a huge amount of electricity in the form of electrolysis. And in order for this to maintain, or in order for this to remain carbon neutral, the energy, that the electricity that's used to perform the electrolysis for all of this has to be either wind or solar power so that we're still using um, green energy and not using some sort of other energy that's just adding a different form of carbon back into uh, the atmosphere. All right, before we get down into the plant that's producing this and talk about that, I'd like to talk about Porsche for a second. Porsche is leading the charge on e-fuel and a lot of the advancements and uh, uh, interesting stuff that's coming out of e-fuel because of Porsche. So Porsche said that by 2025, 50% of their cars will be battery electric, but by 2030, they want to be CO2 neutral, meaning that they're still going to have quite a large percentage of their fleet uh, as internal combustion engines, as ICE engines. Uh, in addition to that, Porsche states that 70% of the cars that they've made are still on the road. That's a lot of 911s, a lot of 356s and uh, 944s and all the rest. Uh, there's a lot of people who own those cars and do not want to convert them to electric. They want those cars to continue to be ICE. The 911 is not uh, slated to go electric. In fact, Porsche's CEO, Oliver Bloom, said that if he has his way, the 911 will never be electric. And if it does become electric, it'll be the last car that they make electric. I know that the uh, head of design over at Porsche would like to see a 911 hybrid, possibly an electric 911. Despite the fact that that's going against what the CEO wants, uh, there's some huge packaging concerns um, with being able to put all that together in the 911 and retain the 911's uh, design and balance and all the rest of that. So Porsche has a really big reason to figure out a way to make carbon neutral fuel uh, for ICE engines. In addition to that, Porsche is tremendously into racing and um, the majority of there is uh, obviously Formula E and uh, a few other electric events, but the overwhelming majority of motorsports is still internal combustion engines. So Porsche needs fuel for that. So uh, what are they doing about it? Porsche has partnered with 
Siemens Energy, ExxonMobil, and quite a few other companies. Put them up on the screen here for you. And they are working on building a plant down in Chile. It's called the uh, Heru Oni plant, and it's uh, down in Chile there. They chose Chile for a couple of reasons. First, uh, Chile wants to become the world leader in green hydrogen and the derivatives that come from that. Second, there is a tremendous amount of wind power and solar power available down in Chile. So this plant seems to be using uh, mostly wind power. It's actually, they broke broken ground on it just last month. Uh, they broke ground on it in October. Here's an article about it. We'll link that in the description for you to check that out. And um, they are planning on being able to use the wind and the solar power down in Chile to be able to create all the electrolysis that they need for this process. Porsche plans to use the e-fuel out of this uh, Hero Oni plant in the Super Cup series by 2022. So again, it's November 2021. They got a lot of work to do. Again, they are they have just broken ground on the plant and they are slated to produce 130,000 liters of e-fuel in 2022. That's supposed to go up to 50 million liters in 2024 and 550 million liters by 2026. So Porsche, Siemens Energy, and ExxonMobil are not messing around. They are putting billions of dollars into this energy plant and uh, into e-fuel. So as we looked at, there's a really good reason for Porsche to do this. ExxonMobil, especially if, if everything switches over to electric, what's ExxonMobil going to do? If uh, ExxonMobil and the other gas companies are able to build other plants and uh, if this one's a success and they're able to build other plants then we'll be able to see them produce e-fuel instead of gasoline and uh, or traditional gasoline and the nice thing about e-fuel uh, a couple of different things one burns because it doesn't have all the other uh, there's there's tons of hydrocarbons in gasoline a lot of them aren't necessary for combustion uh, those get released out into the atmosphere or have to be dealt with in the, uh, the systems that are in the cars or what have you. E-fuel doesn't have anything extra in it. It's just exactly what's needed for the um, combustion process. So e-fuel all on its own actually burns 85% cleaner than traditional gasoline. Additionally, Porsche is reporting that they're seeing more power to the cars that they're putting it in. So uh, apparently it runs uh, better and makes more power than um, traditional gasoline in the exact same system. So what's the problem? Um, the problem is According to um, Engineering Explained, uh, Jason pointed out that it is too difficult, it's not possible to get the cost of this e-fuel down to a manageable level. Uh, Jason pointed out that um, using it in ships, possibly aviation, uh, that those scales uh, make sense and that at that type of a scale that e-fuel does make a lot of sense and that there's a future for it there. However, he feels that we'll never be able to get uh, the economies of scale to the point where e-fuel can get down to a manageable price. Now, Porsche and team are saying that they're going to be able to get e-fuel down to 1.2 euros. For, since we're in the U.S., that's $1.36 per liter. Uh, there's 3.78 liters in a gallon, so 3.78 times 1.36. We're looking at $5.14 per gallon for e-fuel. That's a fantastic price. But... Engineering Explained says it's not going to get down that far. Other authorities uh, agree with them. The International Council for Clean Transport says that there's no possible way that Porsche can get the price down to 1.2 euros. Okay, so the, the reason for this video and the reason why we're talking about e-fuel today is because the thing that I think that Donut didn't push, the thing I think that Jason missed, is that new technology always gets cheaper, always. So when computers first came out, they were incredibly expensive. Only big corporations could own them. Now, everybody's got one in their pocket. When the internet first came out, it was considered unusable outside of academics. And they said that it was uh, not gonna be useful. Now, it's something that everybody uses every single day. The telephone, when the telephone first came out, um, it was not widely embraced as something that was going to be used by people. And then my last example is uh, memory for computers. Memory for computers has started out, used to be very expensive when computers, um, I, I mean, I remember buying memory uh, where we paid hundreds of dollars a bed. And um, now you've got it to the point where you're picking up, let's see, I bought a five terabyte hard drive from Costco just the other day for hundred bucks and memory and computers themselves, uh, RAM's way down, it's just incredibly cheap. 
that happened because as the memory was produced, more people got into making it, more production efficiencies happened, technological breakthroughs happened, um, all that stuff came together and it's just lowered the price and lowered the price and lowered the price. And that happens on all kinds of new technology. Batteries for these electric cars are getting cheaper as technology advances. The processing gets cheaper as the technology advances. So there is absolutely no reason to expect that the technology for e-fuel isn't going to also advance. That as Porsche is proving that it's able to do this, as it goes into the 2022 uh, supercar series and they run their GT3R race cars on this fuel and those cars are competitive, it's going to have other people getting involved. It's going to have other companies getting involved to be able to produce this. And as those other companies get involved, the price is going to come down. It always does. And e-fuel is going to be no exception. Um, in addition to that, there's just a tremendous amount of people who will have some pretty big problems if uh, if e-fuel doesn't work. So there's a, there's a huge incentive for gas companies, for trucking companies that are delivering that fuel, for all the infrastructure that we've already got in place to be able to use that in such a way that it can be beneficial and that it's not a waste for what we've already got on deck and that all those people that are using that for their livelihood can continue to make money. Um, which brings us uh, to the infrastructure. So even if you want to say that electric cars are going to replace gas cars and it's just a matter of time, there are some great electric vehicles out there. Rivian pickup truck seems fantastic. I hope to be able to get my hands on one of those here soon and be able to do a review on it because they just seem awesome if I were going to have an electric vehicle. That's probably the one I'd want. That's pretty sweet. However, I don't have any desire to have all electric vehicles. I like ICE engines. There's something about the roar of the engine as you're pushing it into a corner, as the back end's starting to break loose and it's trying to do its thing, this engine screaming and roaring, it's just fantastic. There's that thrill when you're racing and you're pushing that engine all the way to the edge. You just don't get that with electric. I mean, yeah, you can make it go fast and you can push it through the corners, but without that engine screaming, there's just not that ragged edge, seat of your pants, soul that you get from racing. And if you've ever raced a uh, gas car and then raced an electric car, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I, don't get me wrong, they are fantastically capable and I think that they're really, really cool. But people like ice cars. There's a lot of people like me and a lot of other people um, in the world that don't want to see them go away. So what I would really like to see is rather than electricity, electric cars, that electric cars replacing ice engines, I would like to see them coming alongside and I'd like to see both options. I'd like to be able to have gas cars in my fleet and I'd like to be able to have electric cars in my fleet. I'd like to be able to go out for a drive and I'd like to see plenty of electric cars on the road. I'd like to be able to see plenty of gas cars on the road because what that does is it reduces the strain of electric on the electric grid, which let's be honest, is not ready for everybody to have an electric vehicle. If everybody had an electric vehicle tomorrow, the infrastructure could not support it. We do not have enough uh, lines. We don't have enough charging stations. We don't have enough capacity. We can't produce enough power for everybody to be able to have an electric car. As that infrastructure is put in place, we'll be able to have more electric cars. But we already have the infrastructure for gas cars. So even if we're going to go to a future, as I was saying, even if we're going to go to a future where it's electric only, and I hope that doesn't happen, but even if it does, it's not going to get here as fast as some of the proponents of electricity or electric vehicles would like. And we do need a a uh, viable alternative to do that because there are millions and millions and millions and millions of ICE engines on the road right now and they're not all going to disappear tomorrow. People don't buy a new car every single year. Most people hang on to their car for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years. Heck, this F-250 is a 1986. This sucker is uh, 35 years old? Yeah. So, and I know Ford has come out with their um, electric crate motor, and that's really cool. I think that's really neat, and I would like to do an electric pickup truck at some point just to see how to do it. Um, actually, Jake and I have an idea for an electric vehicle I think you guys are really gonna like, so once we can get that together, we'll show you, it'll be pretty cool. However, I don't wanna convert this F-250 to electric. I want this F-250 to stay gas. We'll be able to do that with e-fuel. There are a tremendous number of very uh, big players in the form of Porsche, Siemens Energy, ExxonMobil, and all the rest who think that this is going to work and who are putting billions of dollars into the technology. I don't think that you can discount that. 
These are not stupid people. Porsche knows what they're doing. And although I'm not gonna say that they can do no wrong, I don't feel like they're the type of company that's gonna waste billions of dollars on a pipe dream. So based on the results that they're getting, based on the initial test that they're getting back for the stuff that they're doing, it looks like they're absolutely right. And so that's why I think that Dona Media didn't push the e-fuel far enough, uh, even though I think they're absolutely correct. I think it is going to be a viable alternative to electric vehicles. Um, and why I think that Jason, with no disrespect, sir, I think that you got it wrong because I do think that those, with everybody working on that and with just the way it always does with all the examples that I pointed out, we're going to see that get a lot cheaper. I sure hope so. I'd love to have gas cars right beside electric cars. I think it makes for a fantastic future when we're able to spread everything out and not put all of our eggs in one basket. So. That's it guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video on eFuel. I hope it enlightened you a little bit onto how it works and what's going on with Porsche and what we can look forward to. We'll keep you updated as Porsche continues to work on this and see what happens with the 2022 racing season. And um, yeah, as long as you're here, why don't you stick around, check out some of these other videos. Really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much, peace. Today, we are talking about eFuel. Why eFuel? Why are we doing eFuel? I don't know. Why are we doing any film? So something like this is not necessarily in there. I don't want to talk about this. We're getting far down. It's a carbon neutral fuel. And the reason why is because they, in order to batteries and the cars themselves. Um, but the, skip all of that, we're getting off topic. There's more, um, that's not a communist scam.